there, it's Kristen. I'm back again with another video, and today I'm going to talk about postcard journals. Um, these are little sketchbooks that I made several years ago, and um, they have stayed with me um, as a as a bookbinding technique for a long time, and I've recently made a whole bunch more in a similar style that I wanted to show you. So I want to start with these older ones. Um, just to give you an idea of what they look like when they're full. Um, I mainly use them as travel journals. So this one was from 2016 and trip to Scotland. And um, they were actually bound pretty poorly. These stitches are completely wrong here, but they held together. This technique was something that I found in a book. Um, I will try to link the book in the description box because I don't actually have it nearby here, me right now and um, I will have to go looking for it. So anyway, um, it's a you can possibly also find something similar online, but the way they're done um, is that the you take two postcards and stick them together and that's the front cover and the back cover and then you just stitch your, your pages in between to those covers which is, you know, that's not such a dramatic uh, style of book binding or anything like that. But to me, it was kind of a revelation when I found it in this book that I was looking at. So um, back when I did these, I filled them all with watercolor paper and I used them for travel journaling. And at the time I did, um, I did some sketches, some travel sketches, and I was sketching in other sketchbooks as well, um, mainly a lot of Stillman and Burn. That was my favorite, and it still is a favorite, but um, these handmade ones, they're just so special. And at the time that I did this particular one, I did all my travel writing and my sketching in one book. And um, this is just, it's such a treasure to go back and look at and see what I was thinking and writing about where we went. You know, I don't have anything fancy with my sketches at all, but they do bring back memories and, um, and you know, some of them I really like, some of them I hate like that. I think that's awful, but, <laughs> and some of them I didn't even color in. Um, and I probably thought, oh, I'll go back and do that later. And of course I never did. So that kind of thing happens too. But these handmade books, make, having them handmade from start to finish is just really cool and something that I hope to do for all my future travels. Um, obviously, there are a lot of pictures in here I did not color. I don't know why, because that would be really nice. I just watercolored it. So anyway, um, this is kind of where my sketchbook style, I mean, um, postcard style sketchbooks came from. That was number one. Number two was this one, which was um, from a trip to Amsterdam. And again, I had postcards. I don't remember where I got the postcards, like why I had them before I actually went there, but um, a lot, I do collect postcards, so I don't know where I found them, but they were perfect for this kind of thing because I could prep my book ahead of time and be all ready. And um, so this one has a few more sketches. That one's pretty cool. I like that. Um, and still quite a bit of writing. And I think that's a really nice way to do a sketchbook is to have everything all at once. But I did feel a little bit bad that I was kind of wasting pages that could be colored, uh, sketched on, and I was just writing on them. So there's always a little bit of, um, a little bit of angst about that, like I'm wasting watercolor paper or something. I don't really think that's true, but I did feel a little bit of that. And so um, you might want to just do it in a more um, like 
like a mixed media paper, which would be fine too. This is actually 140 pound watercolor paper. And you might even notice that I just used what I had, like this one, it's different colors. That doesn't bother me at all. Um, this was the next one that I made, which is just some um, random postcards that I had at home. And it's not a travel journal. I had these little mono prints that I had made and I really liked them, but I didn't know what to do with them. So I took some washi tape and stuck them down in this book. And it wasn't actually until later on that I realized washi tape uh, might not last. So like this one is coming up. Um, but you know, it's another nice, just another fun way, especially if you've done artwork, the, when you do a mono print, it's on really thin paper. This one's actually on parchment paper. And so it's not really suitable paper for a, a book page, not very good for a book page. Plus because it's see-through, it wouldn't work very well. So just figuring out how to um, stick them in a book like this just worked really well for me and now I have them and you know I don't have to feel bad about um, throwing them away you know I'm sure there were some mono prints that I didn't like that I ended up throwing away but these ones I just thought they were kind of cool and they made me happy so I wanted to keep them and I didn't want to just have them in a bin and so I put them in this little book and now they're there for posterity okay and then let's see this was the next one this was a trip to Cape Cod and this one again has quite a bit of writing I mean look at all this it's just writing 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 I didn't do very much sketching at the time and that's okay because sometimes that happens this one was more of a family visit so there's hardly there's almost no sketching in there that's okay because it's still a handmade journal by me about a trip that we did and it makes me happy now this one is the most recent one it doesn't have a date because i haven't done that yet but this was from a year ago so this is 2022 and I did have these postcards in my stash, which was made me very happy because um, then I could make this Maui journal and it would be ready to go the next time we were going off to Hawaii. So um, with this trip, I actually brought two journals with me. The other one is a junk journal that I haven't shown yet and I maybe I will at some point, but not today. That one has all the writing in it and um, it has some photographs, I think, and also some ephemera that I put in there. But this one is just mainly watercolor. And I just really, really love how this one came out. I tried different things. Like on this one, it's just watercolor only. I didn't sketch anything out ahead of time. This one, you know, totally imaginary flowers, but I really like that page. Here I tried sketching with this water soluble blue ink. That was fun. Um, just filled a page with some color and some, you know, landscape views. Sketching at a restaurant and our favorite cheese spot on Maui. We lived in Maui for a year back, oh, about 20 years ago. So. We have our favorite places when we go there, and this is also one of them. Uh, Ula Palakua is one of our favorite places to go. Um, we did this little evening sunset cruise on this um, catamaran. That was really fun. And you know what? This is one of my favorite pictures. I actually did it with water-soluble black ink, and... I love the way the watercolor smudges water-soluble ink, but on this one in particular, I just feel like I did a really good job with the water and the, and the sky, which I'm not great at. And there's leak through from another page, but you know what? I love it, I love it. There's one of our favorite restaurants. Uh, it was voting day. 
Oh, actually, I said 2021. It's, I mean, 20, it is 2022. Yeah, this was our last trip. <laughs> Sorry. I went to Maui twice last year, to Hawaii twice last year. So this was, this was during um, voting day. Um, another favorite restaurant there and just, you know, little, little things around the restaurant that I, um, sketched. This was at the pool and their big sign out in front that has been there both times we've been. So I guess it's a permanent fixture, but I really like how that came out too. And there's another pool picture, just a little house that we saw driving. And this was also on the hotel grounds. I don't really like how this one came out, but it's a, it's a good memory. There's a sunset picture. And, and another one of my little happy little flowers, which I tend to add to everything now, <laughs> apparently. So anyway, these are my first um, postcard sketchbooks. And at the same time I made those, I also made these. Um, this one is a very small journal with half a postcard, but it's actually a different style. So you'll notice with all of these original ones, I um, stitched the covers separately onto the pages, okay? But then I also got a little book kit from Peg and All, it's a company called Peg and All, and they had a book binding kit that I bought. I don't know, it might have even been before I made those other postcard books, and I made made a little book like this. I think it might have been, this might be the original one, but it had French, um, what do they call this? French link, this stitch that goes over a piece of um, seam tape or ribbon or whatever you want to put there and when the book was done it didn't have any covers but when the book was done I decided I would just cut this postcard and uh, no, it's actually two different postcards I cut it to fit and just glued it to the front page of the book okay so that was when I started making books like that and I made this one which is just the very same thing. And these are filled with um, Strathmore drawing paper, which is actually one of my favorite papers to have in a sketchbook. It's just beautiful, creamy paper. Um, and But then I had these, which I think I had originally made, these are all postcard books, that I had originally made in this style with the sewn on covers. But they were um, they were in really bad shape. They were super super wiggly. Like this is this is fairly wiggly, but they were even worse than that because I think I made them afterwards and I didn't look up how to do the stitches, so I did them wrong. You can still see the holes here from this one. Um, so I took them apart in these four. I took them apart and rebound them and redid the covers. And because I was um, redoing covers that had, like this, had a postcard both on the front and the back of each cover, so for four postcards in total on these ones, I ended up losing the one side because I used the same postcards. I just had to decide which side I wanted to have showing. So um, I have a Yosemite version. And this one, which is a Sisters Quilt Show version for um, Sisters Oregon, where we used to live. Well, we used to live in Bend, but it's right nearby. Um, this one, which is really special to me because that's my daughter at Machu Picchu. And um, I don't know if I'll ever make it to Machu Picchu, but if I do, I'll have a journal all ready to go, a sketchbook. So these all have watercolor paper inside in these covers that are just glued on. And I don't think that's gonna be any kind of issue, but if the covers ever do become unglued, I can just put them back on again, right? So I'm not bothered by, I'm not thinking that this is any less 
structural integrity than this style. I think it will work either way. And this one's actually um, from Costa Rica postcards that I had. And I don't know if I'll ever make it to Costa Rica again either, but um, if I do, I will be ready. And if I don't, I can use it for something else. But um, so I had those and I rebound those and I did this um, probably three or four weeks ago. And then I got on a roll and I decided that I would take a whole bunch of old watercolor paintings and actually mixed media or whatever and I would make them into covers for little sketchbooks. So I have those and those and I have these. I have, I don't even know, I didn't count, but I made a whole bunch of little books. So I'm gonna, just gonna show you, these are all blank at the moment. And some of them are filled with nicer paper. That would be great for sketchbooks. Like this is that Strathmore watercolor paper, which is one of my favorites. And this is a pocket journal size, which is, you know, just a good, that's a good travel journal size, actually, because it's pretty small. And um, I don't even know if I'm going to sell any of these or maybe just a few of them or more. I don't know, because sometimes, you know, like this cover, this, this is just weird. <laughs> I, but I had, and, oh, and there's an upside down picture. So this is a problem that I had numerous times where I would put the front cover on. And then when it came to the back cover, I put it on upside down. And I did that at least three times. So you'll see that as we go along. So obviously this will not be for sale, but it's for me. And I will use it because look at all that lovely paper in there. Here's another one. These I drew, I painted all these little guys several years ago and I sold a couple, but mostly they didn't sell. So I use them for book covers and I think this one's really cute. There's another one here. Oh, see, that's an upside down one. Very silly of me, but once you stick these down, I actually use double-sided tape around the edges and then I use um, Fabrifix all the way through and it's, it's really stuck down. Once it's stuck down, you can't take it off. So there's another one that's just for me and I will always be reminded of how silly I am. Here's one that I made from a birthday day card that was really cute and this is um, actually just kind of regular copy weight paper so it's nothing special but it was such a cute card I couldn't resist it and then I had these um, um, ribbons I can't remember where I put them I was going to show them to you but I'll have to do that another time um, and anyway, I have them and I have a whole bunch of different colors. So that's why, look at how fun that is. They can, I can match the color of the ribbon to the painting. This one is actually really random. This is filled with all kinds of base, just all kinds of various papers. So I may actually just, you know, like that's like a good purse sized notebook for whatever. Um, there's these. I had these mixed media drawings that I did. This is a really old painting, you know, nothing special. And in fact, look at on the inside, I just put old sketchbook papers that I want to repurpose. This one, um, and this is another thing. I had some drawings that were, the format wasn't quite right. So I just put them on even if they go sideways, that's okay. This is another one that's full of old drawings and I don't know exactly how I'll repurpose it, paint over that or whatever. Um, here's another one of those animal ones. This one has nice um, Strathmore drawing paper. There's another one. 
with Strathmore drawing paper. Very pretty. Here's one that um, I had this drawing that I did. I t I've taken a lot of Carla Sondheim classes and this was from a class that was in 2020 when we were all in pandemic lockdown and this might have been her 10th anniversary class. I'm not sure. But anyway, I have a ton of artwork that I made during that period because we were all stuck at home. So that was the best thing for me to do. And I, I think they're really sweet, but I don't know what else to do with them. So cutting them up and putting them on a journal cover made me really happy. In this case, this one actually had a, a colored in drawing on the other side, but I didn't like it very much. So I had drawn this on the back and I just noticed it when I was um, looking for all these paintings and I thought, oh, that would, that would be a fun cover. So, you know, I can color that in when I get around to using this. Um, I'm gonna go through this, this box. So there's a bunch of other smaller ones. This one has um, some gel printed papers mixed with the Strathmore drawing paper. So that one could be useful for whatever. And you can, and these papers, most of these papers, except for the, you know, like notebook papers, they would be fine for acrylics. Like the gel printed could be a background for an acrylic drawing a painting. Um, this is done a similar way. And these two have just basic craft paper that I had lying around. Again, these guys are that way, so I guess you could use it that way if you wanted to. This is another, um, these were made from sketchbook pages that I didn't care for. I think I took that whole sketchbook apart. That was a spiral bound one that I took apart. This is also from that same bunch. And this paper, I don't know what it was from, but it all, they all have these little divots in them. So this is more like a uh, cardstock, but it's got a fold in it. You know, it's not great paper, but it will be fine for sketching. Okay, and then, oh, here's another one from that, I think it's the 10th anniversary class and a gel printed paper on the back. This one's, this one's in, this one's good. It's got the Strathmore drawing paper. This one has another old sketchbook page and a gel printed page on the back. And this is actually watercolor paper. paper. So this would be one that I might think about taking on a trip. This one has, um, that was an old sketchbook page that I didn't like. And this one just has plain white heavier than regular paper it's more like a cardstock this one has gel printed paper front and back it's pretty nice and i think this paper is also similar white um, cardstock which this might be sulfite paper which is which is really good for drawing and painting as well here's this old drawing of mine with an, a different old drawing on the back and some more of that same paper. There's another one of those drawings I did during that class. Oh, so this, I think, um, I think this is the first one I did in this big batch. And I did it in the same style as the original ones with the stitched on cover. And when I did this one, see these original ones didn't have this French link stitch here. So that was one difference. But when I did this, I just thought that this kind of binding is a little bit, it's a little squidgy, which is actually not bad if you're gonna be adding um, ephemera or photographs or anything that you wanna collage down. 
it's not too bad to have that because then you have a little extra room in your binding and you can bulk it up a little bit without too much trouble. But anyway, this is um, Strathmore drawing paper. So this will be a nice travel journal. And I just think these drawings were very cute. Let's see, there's a couple, there's an old watercolor painting that I did. And this is just basic white. I don't know. It's kind of regular weight paper, so nothing fancy about that. But it has a gel print on the back. But I thought the bunny was really cute and thought it was too bad that it hadn't been used for anything. Um, this is another one of those lions with gel printed paper. And actually, this is a super um, a copper metallic paint on that. I really like that one. And I put black paper in here because I'm trying to use up my stash of black paper. I don't really use it, but I, I think that it's really cool when people do use it. So this is just a nice little, uh, it's like a black cardstock. So it would be suitable for gel pens, um, gouache paints, I think look really good on this paper. Um, acrylic markers probably look really cool. Here's another, I have three that I did with black paper. So this one is also my original um, paintings from I don't know when, but they're kind of cute. And this one also has black cardstock. And then this one, this, I actually, this is, this was drawings from that class too. And I really like this one. So I don't know, I might keep it. I don't know exactly what I'll put in it, but it's very pretty. And just to give you an idea of what the spines look like, you know, they're just all colorful, very fun. It gives me a lot of pleasure to do these. I think each book takes probably an hour from start to finish. So it takes a little while. This is um, another uh, set of birds that I painted, I think at the same time I did these. And I thought they would be cute covers. This one just has plain white paper. And then I have three, oh no, sorry, six. No, oh, yeah, six larger journals. And I have so many of these that they're all gonna they're all gonna fall all over the place, but I'll try to keep it quiet. So I have six larger ones. And let's see. You can see these three all have a variety of papers that I've just been trying to use up. Some papers that I don't really want to use in my junk journals that I sell. Um this one is a painting I did several years ago, and I just thought it was really cute. This is an old one. And in here, I put um, a variety of papers. This is actually acrylic painting paper. It has a, it has a texture. I don't know if you can even see that, but anyway, that's suitable for acrylic if I wanna use it. These are old pages that I had made a long time ago. It could be like 10 years ago. So um, they're watercolored and I'll just use them as they are. This paper was actually pretty, it's not very sturdy. It's not real watercolor paper. And so I had to put some sticky uh, packing tape on the, on the um, center so that it would be sturdy enough to stay in the book. But I did mix in watercolor paper and some of that watercolor and these things which I don't know exactly what I'll do with but oh and here's a piece of this was like the one piece of this handmade watercolor paper it's super rough surface that'll be fun to play with another one of those and the acrylic paper so there was that one this one has um this, these are a couple of really old paintings as well. And I had some of this um, 
Mi Tientes colored paper, which is actually really fun for drawing on. And I mixed it with some random watercolor sheets. There's an old painting. Um, this actually is a printed sheet that came with a pack of, I think I called it calligraphy paper or something like that, but it's almost like a mixed media weight paper. Very nice to work on. And I just thought those the letters were kind of fun. This is an old drawing that I did in a very long ago Carla Sondheim class. And there's some little, little pieces of whatever. <laughs> Um, so this one's, this one's very random and of course, just for me, because it's kind of on the weird side. This one I actually really like. I like, I did a bunch of these kind of paintings several years ago as well. And some, I did sell a few, um, they were kind of random birds and dogs and cats and colorful and I sold a few but um, I still had some left so I used these two here and this is a mixture of watercolor and that Mi Tientes paper. Actually these pages are all hand torn so they feel really good on the edge. I think this one will be fun to use. I, I like that one. And then these three which are a little more uniform. These are, again, were some draw, um, paintings that I made many years ago, and I sold a few, but mostly they didn't sell, so I repurposed them. And here, I had some of these um, pages that I previously watercolored, and I just added them in here for fun because I think they're pretty. They'll be interesting to figure out how to use them. Some words, little abstract drawings. There's um, that one there. <coughs> so I will use those myself. This one has, oh, this one. Again, those are little watercolor birds, which I did a whole bunch of. But this is all watercolor paper, paper really um, nice quality uh, Fabriano paper that I will um, use for something. I think, you know, maybe more birds. And here we go. This, oh, there's another upside down one. Okay, that's, that's me and this bird right here. Um, I did these owls a long time ago as well. And they've been hanging around for a long time, but I really like them. So I put this all watercolor paper. Paper. This is um, also Fabriano, 140 pound. It's a nice quality, and it's this a little bit of an ivory color. So that's another one that will be just for me. So anyway, that is just a random collection of funny little books that I may or may not put in my shop. They're all different sizes, all different paintings. These are all original. Not a single one of these has been copied. They're the original, actual original painting. Some are water, most of them are watercolor. Some of them have more mixed media of colored pencils. This is gouache. So um, there's a wide variety, but if you think you might be interested in something like that, let me know because that will help make my decision about whether to um, put them in the shop. All right, I think that's it for today. Thank you, see you later, bye-bye.